So now in this video, we're going to look at the LM393 comparator that comes in this kit. So this kit was about $15. It's out of stock right now in Amazon. Hopefully they'll uh, restock. Every time I find something cool on Amazon, they run out of it right afterwards. So in any case, the LM393, it is a dual comparator. There's a comparator on each side and the integrated circuit. I just turned the power on. So the way that we have this wired up right now, we have a higher voltage with the trim pot than the voltage we set as a reference with fixed resistors. So when you have uh, resistors, or in this case a resistive element with a tap along a wiper along that resistive element, you get a fraction of the power supply voltage. So you can see I go lower, more towards the negative rail, the LED is off when I go more than halfway up because these are equal value resistors then the output is high anywhere along there it's a comparator it's taking that voltage a reference voltage in this case and it's comparing it to our variable voltage right here and depending on whether this one's higher or lower the output will be higher or lower so now, like all integrated circuits probably, you need to uh, power it for it to do its thing. The uh, LM393, the positive supply, goes to pin number 8 up there. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. That's how the numbering system works. If it's a longer integrated circuit, you just keep counting until you get to the bottom and then you jump across and count your way up. And uh, there's a little divot on top to indicate the top. But uh, in any case, we got the positive rail to uh, pin number eight there. And then our zero volt reference point, ground, as it's commonly called, the uh, negative rail, since it's a single supply, that goes to pin number four. So that's kind of a common way to uh, power things. But as you can see here, this one, it has a different powering system, as does this one. So always check the data sheet. Even though that's common, it's not always the case. You may have to change where the power goes when you're using a different integrated circuit than the one you had in that position before. And now that we have the power taken care of, once we turn the power supply on, we're gonna go with the output because that's the top pin. So we have an op amp on this side, on the right side, and an op amp on the left side. Their pin layouts are the same except for that one shift down one, that one shift up one compared to the other one because of where the power supply is. But in any case, the top pin is the output. So this output is interesting if you haven't come across open collectors yet because that's what it is. The output open collector means that or open drain if it's a different type of uh, transistors within the op amp. That means that it either connects to ground, that's the low signal, connects to ground, a direct connection right there when it's low. You can think of that. When it's high, it's not connected to anything. It's not conducting at all. So to get power, for a high signal, we need a pull-up resistor. That's what pull-up means, is there's no voltage there, but this will raise the uh, voltage. And uh, so we connect it to the power supply right there. And this point right here will be high, thanks to the resistor. It's connected to the positive rail, unless the output of the uh, LM393 is low. Then it'll go directly to ground. You'll have a direct connection to the negative rail right there. So you see that from time to time in electronics. So to light the LED, we're gonna need the uh, longer lead, the anode, to where the uh, resistor. And the output is short lead, the uh, cathode is up one row here. And I can't get a little gray jumper straight across here very well because there's that little gap there. So I'm gonna grab a uh, longer one right here the gray one may, may work, but still, it's a little easier to see what's going on there. So I'm going to the negative rail up there. So when the LED is on, current's going through the resistor, and then the LED, we consider that high output for the comparator, even though it's not doing anything. When it's off, there's no power right now, but uh, when it's off, that means all the current going through the resistors going directly to ground. We have a direct connection to the negative rail, on both sides of the LED, it won't light up. Now that we got the output taken care of, so the output's a, a little bit different than 
different types of outputs. The inputs are fairly straightforward, whether it's a comparator or an op amp. What it does is it looks at the voltage at these two pins and compares them. So the output's going to be more like what the voltage of the non-inverting input is. So when it's higher, the output will be high. When it's lower, the output than the uh, inverting input, then the output will be low, or at least lower if it's an op amp. This is a comparator, so it goes to one extreme or the other, fully on or fully off. So we're gonna use the inverting, the uh, negative symbol there, as our reference voltage. So it's gonna have a fixed voltage. We're gonna use fixed resistors for that. So both of these will be 10,000 ohms, 10 kilo ohms. It doesn't need current of uh, any significance a little bit of it leaks in but it doesn't depend on current just the voltage so that's 10 kilo ohm we're going to use an equal value resistor so as you can see we have just as much resistance going to the positive side of the power supply as we do to the negative side of the power supply that will result since we're using a 5 volt power supply in 2.5 volts at that uh, inverting input and so that will be our reference voltage. So now we will change the non-inverting input, the plus symbol right there with a trim pot. So there's a resistive element across here. There's a wiper in the middle here. It's connected to the wiper that slides across the resistive element. So if we go all the way to the positive rail, there's no resistance on the positive side so and there's a lot there's 10,000 ohms across here on the uh, negative side so we'll get that 5 volts if we go halfway we'll have half the voltage if we go all the way to the negative rail we'll have a direct connection to the negative rail and we consider that 0 volts there'll be 0 volts at that pin so this one's our reference voltage it's fixed this one's variable it could be either higher or lower so hopefully that all makes sense if you haven't already studied trim pots but uh, they're pretty straightforward. They make a really convenient variable voltage in relationship to the power supply. You get a percentage anywhere between zero up to the negative rail to 100% at the uh, positive rail. So that just went right across there. That is all there is to it. It's actually really simple. Even though you can make more complex circuits out of it, the comparator itself is doing a real simple thing. And uh, so we got the power on, the LED, is off so we have a lot of current going through though in fact we met the limit of what I set on the power supply let's go to a uh, 30 so yeah we were right at the limit so that's 5 volts divided by 220 ohms going to the negative rail and then now I'm gonna turn this up and now the LED turned on so now it's not going into the integrated circuit the current it's going through the 220 ohm resistor and then this LED blocks about 3 volts approximately. And uh, so none of it's going into the integrated circuit though, so there's less current going through the resistor and the LED. So that's really topics for other videos. But in any case, it's really uh, that straightforward right there for the comparator. So now some integrated circuits with the open collector, you can instead of using a pull up resistor in this way I'm going to turn the LED around you can instead use it to sync current just through the load and this one though I don't know if it's something I'm doing but I think I ran into this before with the LM393 so now we're lower it's connected to ground and you'll see we got that 10 milliamps of current going right now if I go to a higher voltage, the LED will go out. So it goes out suddenly. That's, that's not a problem. But you'll notice if I slowly go, now we're in, we were in some kind of limbo right there. The LED's on kind of a little bit, which, you know, may not be a problem. I don't know. Also, we could try to make a Schmidt trigger with feedback. But in uh, any case, I think you should probably just use it with the uh, pull-up resistor and then have the load go to our ground instead of sinking it down but uh, whatever works for you really 